What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm going over Leia Blue Thick, because this deck is all about thick units with high health. And it's a weird aggro deck that's using blue-green uh, on on Leia. So it, it's definitely different, but uh, let me run you through it and tell you what, what I think about it and tell you what I want to do with it and let you guys uh, take it from there. So it's Leia Organa. And it's security complex, so 25 health base, but epic action, give a shield token to a non-leader unit. That'll help us give a shield to a key unit that we want to make sure to get an extra attack in, or to one of our sentinel units to protect Leia or somebody else. So, game plan is rebel-themed aggression, or not aggression, but aggro, uh, straight to the face. So we have Leia, who obviously is a rebel, and she has a lot of synergy with attacking with rebels. So if you look at our early drops and our drops in general, we have a lot of rebels. So we got... Restored Arc, we have Guardian of the Wills, Mon Mothma, Alliance X-Wing. I'm also using uh, three of these Guardian of the Wills that will, uh, besides the Battlefield Marine, that will let me rock the Jedi Lightsaber a turn early to get a, a, a solid 2-3 uh, for that type of an ability. So you have a 5-5 five, five with a reduction on attack with the Lightsaber. But we also are running Kanan and Obi-Wan, so Lightsaber has some more value. But getting ahead of myself... More Rebels, we got Echo Base Defender, Fleet Lieutenant, Wing Leader, the Consular Security Force, who is a Rebel Trooper, Kanan, who's a Rebel, Vigilant Honor Guard, who is a Rebel, and uh, Luke, who's a Rebel. Only have one Luke, if you have more, feel free to put some extra ones in your deck, definitely uh, worth it. Uh, I, I would say probably two is a sweet spot for this deck, I I'd probably want to run two of them, I don't think you need three, but, um, and I'd probably drop uh, a plethora of cards, maybe a Guardian of the Wills, but... Anyway, base strategy, swing wide and swing fast, take the initiative often, and do a lot of damage to the enemy base. But as we get to do that, which is a pretty standard strategy for light side aggro, uh, we also get to sustain a good bit. So we have a Kanan who's going to be healing on attacks. We have an echo base defender with Sentinel. We have the Vigilant Honor Guards with Sentinel until, until they're damaged. We have Obi-Wan with Sentinel, plus he's then going to give experience tokens. So the main kind of strategy of the deck is we're, we're focusing on face, but as we do that, we can play some of these other Sentinels to kind of protect the previous turn's unit so they can get more damage through, um, which ends up being a weird strategy, but it ends up working out pretty decently. You get to swing for a lot of health, a lot of damage, and they kind of are stuck dealing with your Sentinels uh, if they want to get to your big units behind that. Uh, but one of the cool things about the deck in general is the speed. Uh, Leia obviously can ex uh, exhaust action attack with a rebel unit and then attack with another rebel unit. But we have three rebel assaults. We have three metal ceremonies. So when we do get to play rebel assault and attack with two to three units, depending if we have Leia on the board or not, we can then metal ceremony for next action to boost up the army, which is great. Um, but there's a lot of experience tokens in this as well. You have uh, you have the wing leader, you have Obi-Wan Kenobi giving two experience tokens, and essentially you can use that as a extra damage to base, so you kind of put Obi-Wan down. If they want to kill him, you're going to be able to put two experience tokens on a unit that can still attack base. Uh, and then we also have uh, the forces with me, so additional experience tokens there. The main premise of this deck, though, truly, is essentially thick bodies that are going to be a little bit harder to deal with than most aggro decks uh, tend to run, right? So, Consular Security Force, Kanan, Vigilant Honor Guards, Obi-Wan, all high health targets that are going to be harder for people to deal with, right? Not all removal is going to kill these. All of those are above five, so they're outside of the range of... Um, Open fire, uh, only Kanan's at five, so the other three are outside of the range of takedown without being damaged first. And, and I found It Binds All Things is really cool in this deck to heal the Vigilant Honor Guard, so I might even move that up to three It Binds All Things. Um, so there's just a lot of cool synergy here that I haven't really seen in a lot of other aggro decks because there's, uh, I mean, they all have really good rebel synergy, but there's a lot of this interesting, like, thick body synergy that essentially you can just keep these units on the board for a lot longer than most aggro decks that kind of just want to recklessly abandon throw everything at the base so certainly you're going to have a lot less flat damage from hand to enemy bases uh than any red deck would right because you have uh for cause i believe in in red you have k2so doing damage uh you have the gorilla attack pods so you have a lot of like things that can come out and swing right and then yellow as well offers a uh, surprise strike it's got the falcon so more damage to base but i think there's a sustain level to this that makes it pretty interesting it has a pretty cool aggro to aggro matchup 
Uh, so you can kind of outlast aggro decks. And you can also kind of even compete with mid-range uh, a bit there, too, because you have a decent... I think you would want that second loop to really be able to compete with mid-range better. Um, but I think it's decent there. And then, again, against control... Uh, not, I mean, you're an aggro deck, so you do have the opportunity to blast them down. But if they get a ton of healing off, you're going to struggle. Uh, it's it's a deck that doesn't quite have the insane output as, as fast or as sneaky, but it's just got this consistent, I'm playing a unit, they have to deal with it. It's probably a pretty big unit, and I can buff the unit and attack quickly with it. Uh, so it's a different take on aggro, but I think it's really fun, uh, and I think you guys should definitely give it a shot. As far as... Um, some side deck cards that I've thought about and what I've thought about taking out because I like to give I like to give some pointers of how I've got to this point of the deck. Um, like I said, definitely throw another Luke in if you have one. Um, Guardian of the Wills hasn't felt amazing because I only have Jedi lightsaber, but it's another force unit to trigger Obi Wan or to trigger the forces with me or it binds all things. So I think I'm keeping it, but it is something I've been on the fence with. Jedi Lightsaber is good on that, but it's also just good on anything to give it plus three, plus three. That, that's already readied, so you can attack with that three damage, which is great. Uh, the only other thing I was thinking here is maybe Electro Staff. We have a lot of Sentinels, and Electro Staff on Sentinels is really fun. A uh, really fun combo there. Plus, it's a plus two, plus two for two, so it's good value as far as uh, you can deal some extra damage to the enemy base, which is solid. Um, outside of that... Pretty happy with where I'm at. Mon Mothma has felt okay. I know she's a weird ad, um, but we don't have all the red and yellow options here, so we, we gotta kind of you know gotta find something that works. But what she can do is dig Rebel Assault out or Metal Ceremony. They're both uh, Rebel cards. So uh, let alone digging out the really good uh, Fleet Lieutenant or Wing Leader, right? Like but all those are great. But she can also dig up your events, which is actually pretty cool uh, in this deck. But that being said, if you have Mon Mothma on two and you can dig out Wing Leader, it's fantastic because then Mothma can be a 3-5, which is, you know, just really annoying and hard to deal with. Uh, and then I said Security Complex, that we're just kind of essentially giving a non-leader a shield. So uh, Leia coming out on turn five, you can play the Vigilant Honor Guard, and if they don't damage it right away, you can give it a shield, which will then let you essentially have a sentinel through at least two attacks which is pretty cool or again just give obi-wan a shield all all good things there's even turns or games where i'll play battlefield marine for uh, on two he's a three three and my opponent plays like a death star stormtrooper so they have an easy trade that they could hit there and i know i'm going into wing leader or fleet lieutenant and they have initiative or anything i'll just gladly put a shield on the battlefield marine right there so then it feels really weird for them to be like oh do i want to hit that with the death star or the, the stormtrooper or do i want to kind of just go base at this point because i'm just trading into a shield what should i do and then you can buff your battlefield marine and that, if it still has a shield because they went base he's a five five or you can just attack with it with fleet lieutenant or etc so sometimes you want to drop security complex early like that uh but most of the time you want to save it for vigilant honor guard or obi-wan uh, and it's really, really strong effect that you'll see is pretty dang consistent. Uh, you know, in the Cassian deck, I've, I've shown off a bit. I use Jetta City to give the minus four attack so you can trade efficiently. Also a good base for an aggro deck. But I think I'm, I like this one a little bit more. I really like the shield on some some key targets in this deck. It's really, really powerful. Um, so hopefully you guys give it a spin. Tell me what you think. Uh, definitely a different style of a Leia deck, but hopefully you enjoy it. And uh, let me know what you think. Let me know if you make any changes. I'd love to hear and discuss in the comments below what your guys change up and what you're talking about. So, as always, keep on swooning, baby.